right uh, welcome back this is uh, Ribwani I am your teacher I'm from 10 times uh, better generation school ministries as you know the ministry is headed by senior pastor Buderi uh, welcome back we are talking about um, being Christ like in a modern world this is episode number 3 to our returning subscribers welcome back to somebody uh, joining us for the first time today welcome here we talk nothing but the word of the living God straight forward to the word and uh, while you're here remember to like to share and to subscribe um, everything multimedia is, uh, is done by iDesigner Studios we are at iDesigner Studios today um, yes there are handles on screen do reach out to them they do anything from uh, videography, photography, multimedia needs all together. You will be sorted. Um, without wasting time, we're going to introduce the topic of the day. We are talking about um, a few things today. Uh, it still is part and parcel of um, the modern day uh, life of a believer. And here we are talking about um, lawlessness, crime and gangsterism in a modern world so without wasting time let us start off with a word of prayer and we will get straight to it let's pray father thank you thank you for you and your word you are one you have no shadow of turning you father you watch over your word to perform it you always perform your word I say, Father, let that which I teach today be all inspiration of you. Holy Spirit, guide me, teach me, lead me on that which I should teach. I am teaching your word, Father. I don't want to entice the listeners, but it's all about getting a word that edifies and builds us up all together. That way we move from one level of grace and glory to the other. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Um, once again, if you've got your Bible, quickly get your Bible. We're going to make a Bible affirmation and we will get straight to it. You say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I'll be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is ever ready to receive the incorruptible, ever-living, life-changing, transforming, effective, powerful Word of the Living God. My life today and going forward, it will no longer be the same. Never, never, never to the glory and the honor of His name. Amen. Right, uh, back to the topic, being Christ-like in a modern world. And today, yet something uncommon, but needs to be discussed. We are talking about um, lawlessness, crime, and gangsterism. And we are touching on all of this, the God kind of way. What does the Bible say about this? We are stretching the analogies, making sure that we understand it and get to the very end of it. And um, in introducing the subject, we're going to talk it through. The commandments, what the commandments say, what do the commandments prohibit the people from doing? Because the commandments, they are a guide. They tell us how to conduct ourselves in deed and in speech. And um, here it says that, uh, we'll just look on the relevant ones for this one. Uh, Exodus chapter 20 verses 13, uh, 15 and 16. We're just going to touch on this three core. You shall not murder. Murder is associated what, uh, with what we know as crime. You shall not steal. Theft is associated with um, lawlessness as well as crime in itself. And um, again, over and above that, it is associated with uh, gangsterism that we also talk about. Verses 16, you shall not give false testimony about your neighbor. That one meaning that you shall not lie, but we'll get straight and unpack it much further as we go. There are consequences of living in a righteous manner. 
and the consequences sometimes could cost one their own life. The consequences would, again, cost others their lives. The consequences, again, would uh, bring about reputational risk, reputational damages. The consequences, they would break families. The consequences might be felt for generations to come as a consequence of crime, as a consequence of lawlessness, as a consequence of gangsterism. And um, we'll start it off in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 33, which reads that, uh, Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Growing up many times, we grow up in right families, we grow up in good conduct, we grow up with uh, the right way and attitude for life. But while we grow and start to have associations of our own, the friends that we wish to keep for ourselves. It starts to go south and haywire. Because indeed, and for what it's worth, if you ever you are with the wrong company, you end up doing wrong. Whether you see it, whether you think it's happening or not, it starts to creep in. It slowly catches up with you. Gangs of any sort are an example of what we speak of. Um, and the gangs that we speak of are, may only be acceptable if they, they are there for the fulfillment of God's glory. Perhaps you ask yourself, what is a gang? A gang is a group of individuals who commit themselves to one another for the purpose of protection and identity. If protection and identity is towards the Lord, it's fine. But if protection and identity is for the destruction of other people, Shy away. It doesn't work like that. Bad company ruins good morals. When people create sacred networks, um, like those of accomplished criminals and mafia, you know that whatever they do is wicked. They carry out um, their own selfish plans, which their intention is to harm and terrorize the innocent. Back to bad company cor corrupting good morals. We have many children grew up well, like we were saying, but they got lost along the way because, in a probably what do you call it, in their teenage stages, the parents were not there. Perhaps the parents were not were still there, but the influence was just too much. You find somebody losing their whole future because of that. It's time we start to take care of our children, if we are parents. It's time to, I'm not pro promoting violence, but if, uh, what do you call it, gentle parenting doesn't work, <laughs> leave it. Don't spare the children the rod. Bring them back to the godly kind of conduct. Because before you know it, the children will be blaming you to say, but you left me, you could have done X, Y, Z. Lead your child right. Make sure that they stay away from gangs. Make sure that if ever they are ganging, let it be for the glory of God. If you are a parent, do something. Um, again, it also starts, or what leads to gangsterism is uh, petty theft. They want to please and entice one another at school to say, hey, I want some cell some sense of belonging. I want to do X, Y, Z. How many of us went through that to fit in? And ultimately later we realized, did we really fit in or did we fit in such that we ruined our futures? Let us help others not go through the paths that we went through. If we are in those paths, if we are thinking about that, let us always be cognizant that it is not a path of righteousness and it brings about destruction. It's that simple. Examine yourself. Look around the communities that we serve because while we are living here for God, we are here to serve one another. If you can see a child's conduct, if you can see that they are associating with the wrong people, save them from that. You are your brother's keeper. You say, hey, but it's my neighbor. Hey, but this child is stubborn, but this child this. What if it was yours? 
Would you not expect somebody to do it differently or better? Would you not expect them to lead them to the right path? I will speak of a concept associated with Africanism. They call it Ubuntu. You are or we are because of the relations that we have with one another. Let us be mindful and take care of one another and their children. Everything that pertains to their lives, let us be involved. Gangs are not good. That's the long story short. Bad company corrupts good morals. You are there. You started off well at school. Maybe you are at work. You started off, you're doing very well. You get to meet friends who are like, no man, the salary is not enough. Let's start getting one, two, three. You start doing minor or petty theft. You associate with people that swear a lot. You, you, there you're like, ah, but I don't swear. Ah, that one swears a lot. No, 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 no. When I'm there, they swear a little bit. But the attitude or the habit starts. It happens also often. You're accustomed to it. It becomes natural in your ears first. And when it is heard by the ears, it goes to the heart. In one day, while you press for it, before you know it, you're uttering words that you're not supposed to utter. In um, my home language, they say that the fire of the ungodly is hot. It heats you up. You get burnt there. So stay away. Be mindful of the associations you keep. Many times we start with the petty little lies to say, but it's a white lie. It's not so important. It's still not a big deal. Is it not a big deal, really? Be mindful of the company you keep. Again, um, you start to get involved in things where, in this lifestyle, the people that are probably lying, the people that are probably teaching you all of these things, they are your role models. Are they building you up to the right path? Probably not. Let's examine our associations because our associations literally say a lot about us. Some usually say that, um, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Show, look at your associations, look at their conduct. You don't need to be saying it or doing it immediately or right now. But if you look and intently examine and see what the conduct is like, if there is no vision, if there is no dreams, if there is no goals, be rest assured that you are part and parcel of that. And that is what the outcome of yours would be. Ambition, unused, it will decline. Goals not pursued will be lost. What counsel, what associations do you have? Who are you keeping or spending time with? It's important. Invest your time right. That is the first encouragement. Uh, moving right along, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 8 to 19, particularly speaks about wisdom. It teaches us to avoid some paths, paths that do not lead to righteousness, paths that are offered, like we said, by the gangster life, paths that derail and take away the joy of what the Lord has prepared for us. Paths that are not edifying for us in any way. Let us not be there. And again, um, looking at uh, Proverbs again, chapter 14. Um, I think I'll read this once just so that we contextualize them much better. quickly get to it give me a second right here it reads proverbs chapter 14 verse 8 the wisdom of the prudent is to discern his way but the folly of fools deceives them be careful of the counsel that you keep because the counsel that you keep would lead you astray Do not do evil. Gangs, as we know them to exist, they do evil. If, if it's not conduct for the Lord, it's for evil. We don't want that. 
So careful of the company that you keep. Creating a network of accomplished criminals starts by associating with a small petty criminal and then you introduce to the next. Be careful of the company you keep. If you intend to do great things in life, start to associate with those that are great. But you're like, I don't know anybody great. Somebody is better than you at something, something you wish to achieve. Start small. You will build the right connections as you progress. By familiarity, you will get there. You will be introduced to your destiny helpers. Let them help you to achieve and accomplish the right things. Not to do crime. Not to be involved in lawlessness. No. It's about time we do things right. Okay. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8 to 19. It says this one. It pleads with young men to pursue wisdom. Not paths of wickedness and gangs or life of the gangs. Righteousness by all means is great. Righteousness, it builds us up. So let us be encouraged and do what is right. The wisdom of the prudent is to discern his way, but the folly of fools deceives them. That was Proverbs 14.8. A life with God's blessing is one that avoids ungodly relationships. Pick them right. For if you pick them wrong, they will ultimately catch up with you. And you don't want that. Okay. Psalm 1 verses 1 is to spend God's favor. The wise recognize fools and refuse to join their folly. If it's wrong, don't do it. You don't do it because others are doing it. No. You do it because you know the know you have the knowledge of the truth, and the knowledge of the truth shall set you free. And as much as it sets you free, it avoids the path that leads to destruction. It starts small, but it grows. How many times have we started with little things and say, I was just trying this? No. Um, let, let's make an, a, a household example. They cook, the whole household eats. Late at night, you wake up, you go get another piece of chicken. Hmm? You eat it. You go back the next night. You, you get two pieces now. Before you know it, either you're caught or the pot falls down with that lid of a glass and it breaks. How are you going to explain that when the whole family wakes up and finds you in the kitchen hmm? with shiny lips? Will you say it fell? <laughs> so, just like the small things escalate to big things, maybe in small household setups, the small petty little crimes that we do, they build up and before you know it, you might be arrested for it. So don't entertain all this nonsense. It builds up and becomes one with you. Stay away. Back to it, back to it. Um, Ephesians 5.15 It emphasizes the importance of using the God-given wisdom to discern and avoid ungodly relationships. And Psalm 34.16 opposes the evil doers. So why associate with them when the Bible also doesn't allow it? Psalm 34, 16, it reads, Crime, whether well organized or impulsive, is wicked and foolish, and God is set against those who choose evil. Choose the right path. Choose the path that is lawful. Even though it is the unpopular path, it is lawful. God wants his will to be done not your will. Sometimes we need to learn to be patient. We have, in this modern day, many that are led astray because you think, hey, I've been waiting for God. I've been waiting. I've prayed. I've been believing, but nothing is happening. It's God's time. Remember that. It's not your time. And he never runs out of time. He's never late. Habakkuk, it reached 
or teaches us to write down the revelation. He tells us in the latter part that though it tarries, though it lingers, wait for it, for it will definitely come and it will not delay. Crime does not pay. Lawlessness does not pay. It helps to be patient. It helps to wait. There are multiple seasons in the earth. There's summer, there's autumn, there's winter and spring. And they all come in a row. And if it's not your springtime yet, where you see life regenerating, if it's not your summer, where you see the plants blooming and uh, you enjoying the fruit, if it's winter and things are still cold and they still need to defrost and come up, wait! Your time will come. At the end of the day, life is not a competition. Don't try do things to catch up with others. Everyone has their own calendar. Everyone has their own clock. We will all eventually get there. Be patient. Imagine going to jail for something that cannot be undone. Something that ruins your future forever. In my country where I come from, if you are involved in crime, it's also difficult to get the job because they, they associate you with crime and who else would trust you with uh, working for their own entities or saving them when they are worried that you might defraud, you might steal from them. Let us not be easily ensnared by things that will catch up with us later and make us slaves of them. Remember, it might look small now, it might look attractive, it might look lucrative, but the devil is going around like a lion roaring like a lion, seeking who he might devour. Let that not be you. You've got the wisdom of God. Don't allow yourself to be deceived, at least not by the devil. He's not powerful or smart enough to deceive you. God lives and abides in you, both to do of his will and your good his good pleasure. How then can you be deceived? By somebody who's been subject or defeated once and for all and is under your feet. Come on, man. Woman, brother, sister, think about it. Let us choose the godly path. Let us choose to live right. Is it easy? Perhaps not. Would you envy others or look and say, oh, but they are living an ungodly life and they are enjoying it, but for how long? Think about it. And um, moving right along so that we catch up quickly. Um, the destructive uh, nature of gangs and organized crime is not constructive, number one, as you've read. And um, it brings about chaos and destruction. I'll tell you about uh, a mafia. Things we get into without really um, seeing it. Adults have their own form of gang. Uh, life known as organized crime. Crime referred to as mafia. It comes with a sense of family. It uh, pervades uh, this organization. Members stay committed to the gang or mafia due to loyalty or fear of reprisal or getting killed if they leave, which is usually what happens. Um, the mafia originally or see, uh, was originally from Sicily and uh, gravitated to Italy and then United States. They are a ruthless gang of international criminals involved in high levels of corruption, terror, illicit activities, and um, their prohibition has been since the 1920s, but they keep at it. And um, hence we are saying that what began as an illegal alcohol production and distribution quickly uh, morphed into illicit underground uh, businesses of every kind. You would think of prostitution, um, running of uh, drug trades, territorial assassinations, political bribery, and um, part of a whole lot of things. Largely in America and it has spread across in the world. But one thing you pick up is this thing doesn't get small yet it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. As much as you might be doing or poking something, saying it's just little things, I'm not doing much of it, I cannot really get in trouble for this, you are building up character that is leading to destruction. 
stop. It's not worth it. But with that, let's make a quick affirmation first and then we move to the second or latter part where we're going to wrap up. You repeat with me. Thank you, Father, for your word. It brings about correction and reproof. Yes, I might be involved in small measures. Yes, I might be associating with the wrong people. Yes, I know that I want more. And I'm probably feeling impatient because I've prayed, I've been waiting and nothing is happening. But in all of this, I know and I believe that you are God. You have no shadow of turning. You watch over your word to perform it. And I deliberately say, I choose to wait on you, Lord. I choose to not follow the path that leads to destruction. I choose to stay away from gangs that bring no profit from my spirit that might possibly take away from my future. I choose to live a godly life, knowing that God indeed, he watches over his word to perform it, and that which he has promised for my life, he will do. Amen. Right, uh, now that we are leading to the latter part, like we're saying, don't, Be distracted. Don't lose sight. Don't lose focus. And the fourth thing we're going to speak about is biblical guidance for dealing with lawlessness and uh, authorities as well. Proverbs chapter chapter 3 verses 30 to 35 it reads, Do not accuse anyone for no reason when they have done you no harm. Do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways. For the Lord detests the perverse, but takes the upright into confidence. The Lord's curse is the house of the wicked, but he blesses the house of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. The wise inherit honor, but fools get only shame. Quickly back to verses 30. Do not, do not accuse anyone for no reason when they have done you no harm. We live in a world where feminism or whatever rights as they call them are being abused. Ladies of late are lying that they have been raped or sexually assaulted. And that leads to destruction for other guys. If you are a guy and you are accused of such an offense and it never happened, It leads to destruction. If somebody you say did something and they did not do it, stop lying. Why do you have to lie? Why do you want to subject somebody to what is wrong? A small little lie may lead to a lot. People are losing their jobs. People are losing their lives. In South Africa alone, I think we had an instance where a young boy was accused of rape. It was a lie. He killed himself. I'm not saying this to justify or you think that I'm siding with those that are doing it. No, it's wrong. We are against crime, lawlessness and gangs and whatnot. Hence, we cannot stand with it. But it is not proper to lie to get somebody in trouble. We might not have time to get to everything, but like I'm saying, Do not envy violent or choose any of their ways, for the Lord doesn't like it. This one is straightforward. If God doesn't like it, why should you like it? Why should you entertain it? Stay away from it. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1 to 22. It warns against corrupt leaders and the consequences of perverted justice. So corruption is just not the way. Okay. 1 Samuel. Right? Some helpful things to pick up here. 
When Samuel became old, his sons, uh, he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn was Joel and the, his second Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba. Yet his sons did not work, walk in the ways, but uh, turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Then all the leaders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Behold, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint for us kings to judge us like all nations. They lost good positions. They lost what was authority because of corruption, because of wickedness. How many of those we know are going through the similar fate? It's not worth it. Stay away. People are losing jobs. People are losing business deals. People actually killing themselves because of things like this, but they got themselves into. Rather stay away. It's not worth it. Romans chapter 13. And probably this is going to lead us to the end now. Verses 1, I'll read until 7. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. This is the government. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authorities rebels against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment for themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of authority? Then do what is right and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do, not, but if you do wrong, be afraid of rulers. Do not bear the sword for no reason. There are God's servants' agents. You look and say, but in my country, the guys, I don't believe they are right rulers. I don't believe they are doing it right. While they are there, God has allowed it. Observe the laws. Do what they are saying. They are in authority. And as much as they are in authority, you need to respect authorities. Whether they are ruling the way you want, no. It's not about that. It's about fulfillment of the scripture. You fulfill the scripture. You do what needs to be done. If you ought to pay your taxes, pay them. Don't wait and say, but they are misusing those funds. It's not your problem. Yours is to observe. Yours is to do what the word of God says. Stay away from lawlessness. It will get you in trouble. Do not disobey government. Hmm? You do what the word of God says you should do. In a democracy or related uh, form of government, it is the duty and obligations of Christians to vote and participate in politics or political processes so that godly laws will be passed. So don't say you're going to stay away, you're not getting involved. It's not your place to stay away. You do the work of the word. You get involved. We are in a position where we can change things. But if we step away and shy away, things won't change. The change begins with us. We are made in the express image and likeness of God. We continue with creation where God has left it off. We shape and put perspective and bring things to shape by the words that we speak, by our own conduct. So we cannot be quiet. We cannot stop voting. We exercise that which God has given us, which is authority. We exercise that which God has given us which is lead us and following what they are saying we should do. Sometimes you say, but they are so dark and perverse, they listen to nobody. Let your conduct be the one that changes them. Okay, not rebellion. And again, probably in wrapping up here. Um... Paul in uh, Daniel chapter 4.32 is um, not saying that God approves of corrupt governments. God doesn't. He doesn't approve of un uh, ungodly officials. So 
towards the end, um, and while we wrap up, believers, like we said, we do not approve or condone corrupt governments, nor ungodly officials or unjust legislation. Um, hence we say the punishment for sin will come. God will deal with them as he must and how we don't know, but he will do it at his own time. But while we are here, we must understand God, yes, indeed, he allows evil rulers to lead for a time. It is for a limited time. The time will come. The time will pass. But um, we ought to obey. The Bible is clear in as far as uh, obedience for the government is concerned. We are supposed to do as they say. But while they, or if they misbehave and prohibit us from, say for instance, teaching the gospel, then we, we can't allow for that. That would uh, amount to rebellion, unfortunately. But um, perhaps in wrapping up, it is for the Christian not to be passive but active. It is for us to fulfill the law through loving one another. It is for us to wake up from spiritual slumber and start living outright. It is for us to put on the full armor of God to conquer lawlessness, crime, gangsterism, all sorts of things that are not right. If we don't do it, if we don't rise up to it, our nation will be tormented and so will be our households. And we have the authority to stop it. We have the authority to uproot it. It starts one community at a time, one household at a time, one prayer at a time. But we need to rise up and do something about it. Because if we don't, the whole world will suffer. Many things say the Holy Spirit must come down and continents will be saved, be it Africa, Asia, Europe, no man. The Holy Spirit is down. The Holy Spirit lives and abides in us. Let us save the world because we have that ability as Christians, as children of God. We just need to exercise it. We are much more powerful than we think and let us stop looking down upon ourselves. Let's make our last affirmation since we are done. You repeat with me. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I stand up, I rise up, and I do that which the word of God says. I believe and I speak. I fulfill the law through loving one another. I am not a passive Christian, but an active one who will engage where I ought to engage. I will not deliberately disobey the government. I will do that which is expected of me. But that which is wrong, that which is not for the kingdom, that which undermines the kingdom, I will stand up and I will put my foot down because no one can undermine the kingdom of God. I know we might be living with corrupt officials, corrupt governments, but in all of that, I understand that God put them there for a reason. And I will take the lead of those in authority for fulfillment of the scripture. Even though I might not understand, even though I might question it, I will still do it. I will even pray for them that they prosper in all their ways. For I know when they prosper, we all prosper. Because God has put them there for a reason. I do away with lawlessness. I do away with crime. I do away with gangsterism. And I do away with everything that is ungodly and unjust. I choose to lead a victorious, a peaceable, and successful life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 
We hope um, that the message has encouraged, it has given some perspective. We hope that um, while we meet again next week, we'll have more to share. Have yourself a blessed week, Father. God loves you. And we are happy that you are with us here today. And we trust that you were equipped. Reign, rule, and dominate in all areas of your life. God loves you. Have a blessed week, Father. This is your teacher. And we are signing out. Bye for now. Ha, ha, ha.